And then I'm going to share my screen. All right. All right, per usual, we're going to start with prayer. Oh, excuse me. And if anybody would like to pray, you're more than welcome to. But if not, of course, I will pray. Turn this music down. All right, Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you, oh God. Thanksgiving is the first thing from our lips, from our hearts. We just thank you, God, for being almighty. We thank you for every opportunity to come together, oh God, and to give your name the praise. We thank you for this day. This 21st day of January, God, we thank you that it is a day we've never seen before, oh God. And there is something you have in store for us. There's some assignment you have for us. There's something, God, um, that you have set forth for this day. So we look forward to it, God, because we're putting you at the forefront. We, we're putting you before it, oh God. And we know with you being first, God, you're going to lead, you're going to guide us, you're going to show us. So we say thank you, oh God. We thank you for the activity of our limbs. We thank you for physical health, strength. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for seeing the fruits of the spirit in our lives, oh God. Long-suffering, peace, joy, kindness. Thank you, God. Love. Thank you, Lord. Faith. We thank you, God, for, for a moment, God. We just take a moment to not only speak during our prayer, God, but to hear. So Holy Spirit, speak to our hearts now. Hallelujah, you are Lord. Thank you, Lord. We look forward to what you're going to do in this time, God. How you'll bring revelation through your word, oh God. Through a testimony, oh God. We just thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And give thanks. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, this morning. Our opening scripture comes from Job 1, verse 10. I'm reading from the New International Version, and it reads, excuse me, have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? You have blessed the work of his hands so that his flocks and herds are spread throughout the land. And of course, we'll revisit that um, verse of scripture within the meat of our topic today. So our upcoming meetings for February, remember, they're the first and third Saturday of every month. Um, sorry, um, texting somebody something while I'm doing this. Um, first and third Saturday of every month so they for the February they're the fourth and the 18th 
All right. Um, a reminder that the point of this group is for us to be united in prayer about the topics, scriptures, and things that we discuss. So throughout your personal time, throughout the weeks that we're not meeting, the idea is for you to be praying about those topics, about those scriptures. Amen. And then we'll be united in our individual time with in prayer with those things. Amen. All righty. The laptop has been trying my gangster, but that's all right. God is good. It's not going to ruin my happiness. Not going to make me mad. <laughs> All right. Anybody want to testify? Anything you want to share? Um, You want to tell? That is a testimony. This is the time. Amen. Amen. God is wonderful. All right. Okay. So last meeting. Come on, babe. Come on. Okay. Last meeting, we definitely looked at the definition of Lord and we focused on Philippians 2 5 through 11. And so. Real quick, just to kind of sum it up, the definition, of course, of Lord is someone or something having power, authority, or influence, a master or ruler. Um, second definition, based on the Bible dictionary, refers to God as master, and then it says Yahweh, the intimate and personal name of God. It emphasizes his role as Israel's redeemer and covenant Lord. So God is ruler. Lord, excuse me, means ruler, master, um, authority, power. And so as we wrap our minds around that, and as we read these scriptures, we want to focus on, again, our topic, not just Savior, but Lord. So yes, Jesus came to save us, um, that we might not be condemned by sin, but that we have freedom in his salvation. And so, so sorry, y'all, I told you this. This thing is acting up and it's just doing weird stuff, but bless the Lord anyhow. Um, so we looked at Philippians 2, 5 through 11, and the points that we highlighted are that we looked at was that Jesus made himself, um, I'm looking at skipping down to verse seven, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, um, being made in the human likeness and being found in appearance as man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross, verse nine. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, Verse 10, that at that name, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Verse 11, and every tongue and knowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So we understand that Jesus is Lord. He's ruler over our lives. He's master. He's king. Amen. And we submit. We obey Okay, so for part two of our not just Savior, but Lord, my bad, I forgot to change the dates here, but again, we're meeting February 4th. So from today, January 21st through February 3rd, we'll be praying about this topic and this scripture. So it opens with, we know of Job's story, but let's zoom in on a particular part of his story. And most of the time, when we discuss the story of Job or my experience has been when I've heard preachers discuss Job, of course, it was the story of, you know, God assigning or allowing the enemy, Satan, to bother Job. 
but told him he can't kill him. So, um, like I said, there's a particular part, though, I want to focus in on. And, of course, we know in the end, after Job lost his family, his houses, his cattle, his wife, his children. At the end, I think it's 42 verses, Job was restored. He received doubled. He got 10 more children, had even more land. And God restored him because he was faithful. Uh, he would not deny God. He still believed. He still worshiped. He still wouldn't curse God and die as his wife told him to. All right. So verse six of chapter one, one day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also came with them. Verse seven, the Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord from roaming through the earth, going back and forth on it. Excuse me, verse eight. And then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He's blameless and upright. A man who fears God and shuns evil. Verse nine, does Job fear God for nothing? Satan replied, verse 10, have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? You have blessed the work of his hands so that his flocks and herds are spread throughout the land. But now stretch out your hand and strike everything he has. He will surely curse you to your face. So here we see a dialogue between Satan and God. And basically Satan is saying, of course, there's no man on earth like him. And of course, he's like, listen, upright, because you put a hedge of protection around him and his household and everything. You bless the work of his hands and his flocks and the herds are spread all through the land. But if you curse him, if you strike him, he'll curse you to your face. That's what Satan was saying. So. Um, right there in that bolden paragraph, it says the Lord kept a hedge of protection around Job and all his, and all he possessed. The Lord blessed the work of his hands. The Lord also suggested Job to be tried by the accuser because he knew Job would remain faithful. Here's what I want to focus in on. As we know the Lord as our ruler, um, the authority, the power, our king, our everything. Understand that he puts a hedge of protection around us. <laughs> He's our keeper. Amen. He blesses the works of our hands. He is our protector, our provider. Right. He rules. He he has kept us and keeps us from danger seen and unseen. Amen. And so, again, I wanted to get kind of a magnifying glass for us to understand that, for us to really wrap our minds around. He keeps us. Amen. He has that hedge of protection around us, whether we realize it or not, whether we've thought about it or not. Um, God has kept us. The Lord has protected us. Amen. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. He's kept us. Thank you, God. When Satan has sent demons, when when uh, witches, warlocks, and other things are trying in their demi power, their many, the little power that they have, have tried to pray against us and send um, demonic forces and things that we don't even know about. The Lord, our ruler, our king, the the power and authority has kept a hedge of protection around us, our children. Thank you, Lord. 
when others may have experienced break-ins at their homes and fires and devastation, God has kept a hedge of protection around us, not because of anything we've done so good. Thank you, Lord. But he saw fit to keep us. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. And uh, for our discussion time, I put, think about how we show God he is Lord. He's ruler of our lives. So take a moment and think about that. How do we show God he's Lord? He's ruler of our lives. What do we do that show him we understand his position and we understand ours? Him as Lord, us as servants. Him is king, us as servant. Him is ruler, us as disciples. Anybody want to chime in? How do we show God he's Lord, he's ruler of our lives? I good morning. Say, go ahead. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, was somebody else trying to talk? No, no, it was just me. You go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I was going to say, you know, I think <clears throat> one of the things is when you come to realize that <clears throat> you have to put him first, that yeah. it, it can't be an afterthought. You know, he is, he has to be first. He has to be first when you wake up. He has to be first before you make that decision, before you spend that money, before yeah. you walk out this life and it's hard because if you haven't been taught to put in first it makes it very difficult when you're used to being what we call I'm grown mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I do yeah because you're not grown in the eyesight of God mm. that you know you you're still his child and he's still expecting you to acknowledge me because mm -hmm. he gives us free will that's right and, you know, and it's just like with your children, you want them to think for themselves, but give me the honor mm. that I'm due to mm. come to me, ask me, consult with me, mm. get advice from me. Let me give you wisdom and accept it. That's good. So that, that that's my. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. He has to be first. He has to be first. And we know through experience when we've done it so-called on our own, and then we have to come back saying, oh, Lord, 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 I done messed it up, Lord. Amen. Mama, I see your hand. Go ahead. Yes, good morning. Um, I was thinking about something that happened last night, and I remember 10-year-old Krista started to pray in the car. And um, it made me think about us as how we, like the young lady was just saying, how we are when we think we're grown. But then as a child, you know, she began to pray and have her faith, you know, Lord, please protect us, please cover us. And I thought that seed has been planted and she's seen it modeled. So now she has her own free will and she is trusting God in her 10 year old not childlike way, I shouldn't say that because she's gonna be in middle school next year. So it just really touched me to hear that because seeds are always being planted and your children are always watching you. And then to see her carry that forward with such faith, it just made me think about us, like Miss Billings said, need, needing to go back and be childlike. And remember, we're really not grown. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> right. We're just bigger kids. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Anybody else want to chime in before we move to our next slide? Amen. So again, he kept that hedge of protection around Job and he does the same for us. Amen. Because he is our Lord, because he is our protector, because he is our provider. And once we have that understanding, we'll realize he is our everything. He is the ruler of every decision. When we go to him, he does lead God and direct us when we go to him. Amen. Amen. All right. So now 
Uh, we're going to look at First uh, Kings 11. And it says, during Solomon's reign as king, he disobeyed God and received his consequence. So let's look at 1 Kings 11, one through six, comes from the New International Version, verse 11. King Solomon, however, loved many foreign women besides Pharaoh's daughter. He loved Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, 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 I'm gonna get it right, and Hittites, verse two. They were from nations about which the Lord had told the Israelites, you must not intermarry with them because they will surely turn your hearts after their gods. Nevertheless, Solomon held fast to them in love. Verse three, he had 700 wives of royal birth and 300 concubines and his wives led him astray. Verse four, as Solomon grew old, his wives turned his heart after other gods, and his heart was not fully devoted to the Lord, his God, as the heart of David, his father had been. Verse five, he followed Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and Malik the detestable God of the Ammonites, verse six. So Solomon did evil in the eyes of the Lord and he did not follow the Lord completely as David, his father had done. First Kings 11 and 11 explains Solomon's consequence. So basically Solomon disobeyed, right? The Lord God told him, don't you marry them other people because they're going to surely turn your heart after their gods. And what he did, the opposite, 700 wives, y'all, 300 concubines, a thousand women. So surely the Lord warned him, hey, don't mess with them. They're going to turn your heart to their gods. And sure enough, the word tells us right here, his wives turned his heart after their gods, and his heart was not fully devoted to the Lord, his God. That's the thing about God being our Lord, Jesus being our Lord. He wants, he desires for us to turn to him in all things, as Miss Billings was saying. He desires to be first. He desires for us to go to him in prayer. He desires for us to acknowledge him in all our ways so he can direct our path. Because when we don't, we set ourselves up for failure. We set ourselves up for confusion. We set ourselves up to be led astray. Amen. So we've got to trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not to our own understanding. Solomon got caught up with them wives, and I'm sure he was persuaded through, you know, intimacy with these wives, through pillow talking with these wives, through spending time. And I don't even know how you got time for 700 wives, let alone 300 concubines, a thousand. How do you have the time? But anyway, God told him he didn't listen. And in the end, now, God said, I mean, the word says that Solomon did evil in the eyes of the Lord. I surely don't want the Lord to see me as doing evil in his eyes, but I want to more so be like David, a woman after God's own heart. Amen. So at the bottom, within the, our discussion time, it says not only did Jesus submit to death on a cross and save us from the cost of our sin, but he is our ruler, our master, our keeper, our provider, and on and on and on. He is our everything. So we can learn from Solomon's story. Sorry, guys, I told you this computer is acting up. Anybody want to chime in about this story and how we can, what we can take or glean from it? And it's definitely obey, obey our ruler, or obey our king, obey the Lord. 
Somebody turned their mic on. No, on accident. I think that we have to be careful within our own everyday lives. Mm -hmm. I remember praying and asking the Lord to tell me what to eat in my diet. Mm -hmm. And he told me plain and clear uh, fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. So fast forward to this year, we had a student and I was doing great, did wonderful. Oh, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. Fast forward to this year, I had a student who uh, we put on a behavior mod. And when we put her in the behavior mod, I would time her while we were working for about five minutes. And then when the time would go off, she'd get a snack. Mm -hmm. The bad thing is I had snacks in my possession. And before mm -hmm. you know it, I was eating goldfish. Mm -hmm. I was eating pretzels. I was eating chips. And it was like, I couldn't stop. It was uncontrollable. Mm -hmm. So even when hearing him telling me what to do, I had those small things around me that I wasn't aware of, AKA goldfish pretzels and chips and whatever else went into my mouth mm -hmm. that I really didn't even need. Cause all I need to do was ask him, Hey, what should I do for her? And uh, I did not, I, in my own power going, Oh, I know a behavior mod I could do, or I could have used the timer with something else versus food because mm -hmm. I opened myself up because Solomon opened himself up because he was trying to make alliances with other kingdoms. So, you know, there wouldn't be wars. Right. And he didn't need that because he had God on his side. Mm. So it's like we open ourselves up unnecessarily and then it comes back to haunt us in a big way. And right now I'm struggling with my chips and things again because mm. I opened myself up and made myself vulnerable. Mm. So you got to be careful that's of good. that on a daily basis. That's good, Miss Bacon. Oh, that's good. As you were talking, I thought about our surroundings. Ooh, because Solomon had all these not these ites around him, Moabite, mm -hmm. Amites, Edomite, Hittite, 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 right? <laughs> and God had already told him, no, 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 don't you do it. Don't you marry them women because they're going to turn your heart. But no, like you said, he's trying to build alliances and trying to do this. But had he listened to God, I'm sure God would have made ways, you know, as we've read in Kings before, how God had the enemies turn on each other, right? So God mm -hmm. would have made a way when Solomon was concerned about, you know, being in good standing with these other nations. But no, he going to marry these women and get his heart turned anyway. And just as you said, you had the snacks in your environment. You had it around you so you could easily access it. Oh, mm -hmm. that was good, Miss Bacon. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Anybody else before we move on to our prayer? Anybody else? Anyone? Don't want to leave anybody out. Amen. Just, just, just to bring some light on to the severity of what Solomon did. Um, if, if we can remember these ites, all of these Hittites and mm -hmm. Jebusites and all of these people, that was the the daughters of Lot hmm. who slept with him to have children. Right, right, right. So when you really think about why God told him to stay away from them, hmm. because they were treacherous. Hmm. They were manipulative women. Hmm. And so to realize that Solomon now knew because remember, they're all relatives, but he mm -hmm. knew there's no way he didn't know the story of who they were. Mm. And he did it anyway. My Lord. So you realize why God said he did evil yeah. in the sight of the Lord. It wasn't just, oh, I was with these women, but you know who these women are. Mm. So. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That's good. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Good morning. Um, I'm Janine Wilson. I'm a friend of your mom's. Good morning. Thank good you for morning. coming on in. Yes, I'm glad <laughs> she invited me. I was just thinking too, um, kind of like what Miss Billings just said. He was so wise. And even in his wisdom, 
I'm just sitting here. I'm like, as wise as he was, he was still susceptible to temptation. Mm. Mm. That's good. Still susceptible. Not exempt, and then that's that's a token that's that that proves we need God, we need Him so bad. He's a necessity. We need His authority. We need Him to rule and reign over us. We need it because left to our own devices, we gonna mess something up. <laughs> we gonna cause destruction in our own lives. We're gonna cause you know, something to go awry. So we need him. And and no, not that we're ever going to achieve perfection, but with God, we can carry out his will, his way, what he desires since he is ruler. Amen. Yeah. Woo. I'm pumped up, y'all. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Miss Janine. All right. Um, we're going to move because time is a ticking. This is a reminder, as Miss um, Bacon was talking about. I love just the example of God. What should I eat? Just consulting him. Amen. So we know that we shouldn't have the greasy stuff. You know, we know what what is um, bad for us. But I love, again, how Miss Bacon said she consulted him, went to him. Lord, what should I eat? You show me, you, sh you show me. So this is just a reminder. We, our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. So we've got to do our part in taking care of them. Amen, exercise, stretch, healthy snacks, colorful meals, mostly vegetables, um, water. So what God tells you to eat may differ from what he told me or tell Ms. Bacon. But again, he's Lord of our lives. and We've got to consult him. Even in those things, the things that we deem to be small, he should be acknowledged first. Amen. All right. It is prayer time. Um, my little notice is telling me we got five minutes. So our scripture, of course, Referring to our prayer time, Mark 11, 24. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it. There's that faith and it will be yours. Thank you, God. So we go to God in prayer. Now, Father God, we just thank you again, God. We thank you for what has been heard, what has been seen, oh God. We thank you for your word um, that it won't return void, oh God. We thank you that it has been implanted in us and it will do what you set out for it to do. We thank you for the reminder that you are Lord, you are King, you are ruler. And so we will be intentional, oh God. We will be intentional in seeking out you, God, first, putting you first. Thank you, Lord God. We will be intentional, oh God, to quiet ourselves, to hear what your spirit is speaking to us, oh God. So thank you, God, Holy Spirit, for ruling, leading, guiding, showing us the way. Thank you, God, for your word that teaches us, guides us, rebukes us, teaches us in righteousness. Thank you, Lord, so that we can do every good work that you assign us, oh God. God, I ask, oh Lord, that you touch each and every person on this line, oh God. Whatever the needs are, whatever the assignments are, God, let them be wise enough to take the time, oh God, to spend with you day in and day out, throughout the day, oh God hearing your voice and obeying Lord Jesus. We thank you, God, that the enemy cannot and will not come against your word, oh God. We thank you that the attempts, the weapons that have been formed against us will not be able to prosper, oh God. We just give your name the glory. We give your name the honor, the praise for truly you are worthy, God. We thank you that your kingdom 
is continuing to be strengthened and rise up. We thank you that you're you're raising up a generation with these babies that will stand firm on your truth, your word, and won't be afraid, oh God, to have holy boldness and speak, oh God, to the nations and speak, oh God, that you are the true and living God in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We thank you, God, that we can still learn from our elders, oh God, from their walk. And let us be careful to take the time to spend with them and hear their stories and learn from them, oh God. We thank you for all things, for they work for the good of those who love you and are called according to your purpose, oh God. We bless you, God. We praise you. We thank you for the prayers of the righteous avail of much. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We give you the praise, oh God, for you are worthy. You are awesome in all your ways. You are marvelous. Thank you, God. It is in Jesus' name that we pray and give thanks. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank you for participating. Thank you for sharing, bringing people in. Thank y'all for your time and thank you for what you've contributed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget February 4th is our next meeting. And please don't hesitate to share when I send out the links Friday night. Please share. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, when I send out the replay, please do so. I love y'all. Y'all have a beautiful Saturday. Remember to put God first. Mwah, 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 mwah. Thank y'all. See y'all next first Saturday. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <Bye. laughs>